Hello love bugs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm interested in starting a new series so I want to get your input on it. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is reviewing a book that I read called Lovable by Kelly Flanagan. If you haven't read it, go! Go freaking read it. Seriously, anyone could benefit from this book. But basically what I want to do is go through some of the main key points in the book because I just found it so beautiful, so beautifully written, so important, especially in our society today. If you're new here, I'm Sarah and I help teach people find inner happiness through fitness and spirituality. And today we're gonna try something new. <laughs> So if you guys do like this type of book review, please let me know in the comments below and I'll continue making them. Otherwise, we'll scratch it, okay? This is our channel, not mine, ours. This is sort of mine, but you know, it's a little bit yours too. <laughs> so this book, Lovable, I actually listened to it on audio so I don't have the physical book with me. I'm a huge bookworm, I always have been. I mean, I have a degree in journalism, so writing, reading always kind of been my thing this book was so amazing it inspired me to make this video and i realized with how many books i read and, and i listen to on audio like i should be sharing this stuff with you guys because it's amazing it's life-changing i was blown away by kelly's writing it was so relatable so raw so real and just so wonderfully written that within the first few minutes i was like oh oh my gosh like it was just amazing and basically what this book is about is it kind of stems off from him writing letters to his children and basically him finding himself again after getting slaughtered and weighted down by society and through experiences and growing into adulthood and essentially getting back to our little one, as he calls it, otherwise known as your inner child, is what I like to call it. And it's interesting because I think I personally believe in this so much, and maybe that's why this book spoke to me specifically so much, because I think life is, or should be, a game. I think it should be enjoyed. I think you should play. I think that, yeah, you should set up yourself for success and retirement and all those kind of things. But more than anything, I believe life should be fun and enjoyed. And I think we should laugh every day and spend time with the people that we love and, and, and do the things that we enjoy doing. And that's kind of what this book is all about. So the first thing I want to touch on is, because I already mentioned it, this, this little one or this inner child inside of all of us. If you go back to yourself as a child, what did you want to do? Who did you want to be? You didn't come in thinking of all these jaded ideas and all these what ifs because you haven't fallen prey yet to society and through the schooling systems and, and people telling you what to do and, and your parents and all of these lessons that we learn as a child that we take with us through the rest of our lives and oftentimes we lose that joy, that spark for our lives because we get caught up in the day to day. We get caught up in, oh, you know, did you get the kids up for school? Oh, well, I, I really wanna get this promotion or my boss talked down to me, this relationship is failing. All of these things that we go through as a human being, they pile up and they pile up and they pile up and before we know it, we're not doing anything that we enjoy doing. We're not exploring the world or exploring life or exploring our freaking backyards. We're not playing games because life is so serious, but it doesn't have to be. And that's the whole point of getting back to your inner child and getting back to your little one. One of the things I always say 
that I love to do, my favorite thing, my favorite thing in the whole world is to go to EDM music festivals. It's been really rough not being able to go because of COVID. And the reason I always say that I love going there is because I feel so free. You literally get to escape society for like three or four days and live in this other world where you're just doing whatever you want and listening to music that you want and eating what you want and just doing whatever you feel like doing. And there's such a beautiful freedom in that. That's why I crave them so much. That's why out of everything this past year, not being able to go to music festivals was for me the hardest thing about being shut down. I sold two freaking festival tickets. It sucks because I feel so trapped. And I think the whole point of this in the book is that we get so trapped into our everyday lives and we, we, we stay in this little box of Ooh, we must go to school and get good grades and go to college and get a job and get married and have kids and buy a house and die. No. No. I do not believe that that is the way life is to be lived. What did you enjoy doing as a child? What interested you? What games did you like to play? Go back to doing that. Remember when we played kickball and we didn't care who won or lost? That's the whole point. Life is meant to be enjoyed. Trace yourself back. That little one, that inner child that has been damaged through life, that's been broken, he or she's still there. They're still inside of us. And we owe it to our younger selves to find that person and go back to that and find that spark and that joy for life. And another part of that, another the second part I'll say of this book is that we're enough as we are, as we sit. I'm enough right now as I sit in this chair, not because of my production, not because of my performance. In a society where everything is based off of our productivity levels and what we're doing is not the way it's supposed to be. We are enough without hitting those sales numbers or closing these deals or getting this production done or getting this report in first or finishing the, the test in college first. And look, like I get it. I'm, I get so caught, I'm in sales. Of course I'm caught up in numbers and closing deals and making this profit. I used to be a competitive gymnast. Nothing mattered but getting the perfect 10. And what happens is that when we're so focused on producing and results, is that we forget why we're doing it in the first place. We lose our enjoyment for those things. You know, I was a competitive gymnast, like I just mentioned, loved it. Loved gymnastics, I was so good at it. And I never left a competition without at least one medal. Like I, I, I competed when I had messed up ankles, when I had broken fingers, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you try holding on to an uneven bar and you got two fingers up in the splint stuff and you know I loved it I, I, I did it for years and years and years I was gonna go to college for it I was gonna be in the Olympics like you know the whole shebang it was sometime in middle school where I realized I was going to practice four nights a week right after school for like three hours and then you had to come home do homework blah blah blah, blah. competitions on the weekends I had no life. I wasn't okay with that. And basically the outcomes and the pushiness and the, the perfection of society and the fact that I had to hit, you know, these things are make sure you point that toe where you're going to lose a 10th of a point or whatever it is. It took the joy out of it. It was so stressful, even as a middle school child that I quit something I loved doing that I found so much joy in because the fact that I had to be perfect at it and that it took up so much of my time and that it became a job and a chore and not just something I like to do forced me to quit. And if you think about it, don't we get caught up in that all the time? Even now, sometimes when I feel that I'm going to the gym, obviously I, I, I'm huge in, in lifting and um, I've been doing it for a decade now. And every once in a while, I get to the point where I realize I'm just going through the motions. I don't feel like going to the gym. And that is becoming kind of a chore. And this doesn't happen a lot, but when it does, it really freaking does. 
and just happened to me th this, this past week. And I was like, you know what? I'm just not gonna go for a few days. And after like a few days, I was like, ugh, itching to go to the gym because I missed it. So I w invite you to take a look at your own life and look at things that you enjoy doing. Have you made it a job? Have you turned it into a chore? And if you have, how do you take steps back to get back to truly enjoying it? Yes, make a career out of your passion. Love that idea, but make sure that it doesn't turn it into something you resent and something that you loathe and something that you don't wanna do. You are enough. As you sit there watching or listening to this video, if you don't get the dishes done, if you don't turn in your report, if you get a B on the test instead of an A, you're enough. I'm enough. And that's something that as a society, we really need to start working on and helping each other see that in each other. This is a team freaking effort. And by team effort, please like this video. It helps me. We're teammates, right? <laughs> and the last point that I really want to touch on that I found was very interesting and intriguing is that you know, it's human nature. We are literally built to compare and our minds are very divisive. I mean, look at this freaking country. It is what it is. When we're judging others, we're actually judging ourselves in relative to that person. When he was going over this stuff in the book, I was like, whoa. An example that Kelly uses in the book is getting jealous of uh, another person in regards to your significant other. So say you're out and you're at a restaurant, you're sitting down and the waiter or the waitress comes over and they're flirting with your significant other and you start to feel uncomfortable, insecure. And you're looking at that waiter or waitress and you're like assessing them essentially, right? And you're assessing them and then you become insecure. Well, why are you insecure? It's because you have decided in your brain, in your mind, regardless of what your significant other thinks or even notices, you've already decided that that waiter or waitress is, has something that you don't, has something that, that you're missing. You know, maybe it's uh, their appearance, maybe it's their voice, maybe it's their job, whatever it is. You are comparing that person to yourself and you think you're judging that person, but really you're judging yourself in comparison to that person. And I think another part that Kelly touched on in this book in relation to this that is so important is that, as I mentioned earlier, we're all jaded. We've all gone through hardships. We've all gone through different things, whether it's addictions or abuse or, or a lack of parents or parents that were awful or relationships or whatever. There's so diseases. I mean, there's so many things that we've all gone through. We're all broken, but we're all beautiful too. One of the things that Kelly says that he says to himself over and over again is I am broken and I'm beautiful. It's not an either or. And the thing is, is we think that our struggles and our scars, our mental scars or physical, are what make us insecure. And at the end of the day, the fact that we're all broken is what the common ground is. And if we can just listen to that inner voice of grace, as Kelly states so often in the book, and understand we're all broken, just like I said earlier on social media, we look at this person posting this as, you know, perfect girl with the perfect body and perfect life. We don't know what they've been through. We don't know what they're currently going through. The whole point here is in this book, oh, so amazing, is that we're all lovable just as we are and that we need to remember that. We're broken and we're beautiful. We're broken and we're limitless. And to have that grace and give that grace not only for ourselves, but for others as well. And to stop judging others and judging ourselves and to understand that we're all in this crazy life together. I hope you guys enjoyed this little review. If you did, let me know in the comments below and I'll keep doing them. If not, it's cool, no worries, it's just one video. But I really enjoyed making it. I took notes while I was reading the book because I just wanted to share these points with you guys. I love you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. I'll see you guys next week. And really don't forget after this book, be limitlessly yourself.